Dirk, thanks so much for your Thank time. You, appreciate I it. mean, you have gotten a, a wide response from everyone uh, looking at this. It's a historic <laughs> uh, 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 movement, yes. as many are calling it. The ANC has even weighed in. They, call, they are saying that, you know, to call what Cecil is doing to try and address empowerment and exclusion issues here in South Africa, racial exclusion is at its best, quoting them, malicious and at its worst, dishonest. Why do you believe in this cause so much? The fact is, Sasol had a previous scheme in Zalo, and in Zalo included all workers, sure. all on the specific class. And they said that it's because they don't want to divide workers on base of race. Then suddenly there's a new scheme. Now already a kind of expectation is created. The new scheme excludes the white workers. And suddenly they feel estranged. They say, why now? Sure. We were part and we see a past that was inclusive and a future that is exclusive. And they feel frustrated. And they said, here we are, we are frustrated. And they voted overwhelming in favor of the strike action. Now, personnel scheme um, share schemes is as a rule a scheme to align workers with the mission of the company. As a rule, it is not an empowerment scheme per se where you exclude. And interesting enough, the mining charter, the draft mining charter that was published in the Government Gazette makes it quite clear mm. that white workers must be included in share schemes because workers are workers. Mm. And so what has Cecil said? Sasol's main argument for excluding the white workers um, from this scheme is because they want to list on the empowerment segment of the JSE where only black and black can trade. And that is actually to protect their empowerment status. So it's a bit pragmatic decision, but the problem with this pragmatic decision is that you estrange a large part of your employees, your ordinary white blue collar workers, but the other problem with that is, on the empowerment segment, you are watering down the share value of your black employees as well, because they can only trade in that specific segment. So I think it's a lose-lose for workers, and it's a win for Sussel's um, empowerment scorecard. But that is not what a scorecard is about. A scorecard is actually a moral thing that say we want to empower our people. We, we just can't understand why is it necessary mm. to exclude if you want to empower? Mm. But is it not because the argument is based on the fact that we're excluding people or white people, let's be frank now, who benefited under the previous uh, system that was apartheid and they were able to or, or find themselves in a better position than many black people were and that's why we're having black economic empowerment that's happening. That argument I understand 100% and we also believe that imbalances must be rectified sure. and there is huge affirmative action programs in Sasol that actually benefits black South Africans that gave them access to the workplace. They have training programs that to a large extent exclu exclusively blacks. They are black. They have um, um, bursary schemes that help black youth. Mm. But then at the sa stage, these workers work at the same place, in the same blue overalls. And if it then happens that one guy suddenly get now share schemes on top of everything, worth of 500,000 rand, he's only working mm. there for three weeks. The other guy is working there for 30 years mm. and he gets nothing. Then it creates mm. frustration. And we can talk about that to the left mm. and the right. But the fact of the matter is the high turnout in the strike ballot shows these workers are frustrated. Mm. They message to South Africa's we are hurtful and sure. we want to be heard. Sure, sure, sure. So now you, you're taking your voice as far as the US. I see you're planning some application there. What are you hoping to achieve from mm. the US regulators? Of course, Sasol has um, uh, um, um, a plant in the US as well. Yeah. Um, and therefore, they must, um, um, must be um, in compliance with the US regulators. Mm -hmm. And we plan to lay a uh, charge uh, tomorrow at the US um, regulators to say that Sasol must be investigated because we believe that this kind of racial inclusion is not in line with what is expected by the US regulators. It's also not in line with the United Nations um, community, um, Convention for the Eradication of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. Mm -hmm. It's not even in line with our own mining charter. They're not in line with anything. Mm. 
And that is why we are so angry about this. Mm. And so how do you believe Cecil can, can, can fix this at this stage of the game? Well, the Human Rights Commission brought out a report on equality just last week. And they came forward with a very interesting um, proposal. And that is if you look at a specific um, um, class of workers, then need is very important. And then you include everyone um, um, with a specific need. And that was the basic, basic argument when we negotiated the uh, mining charter as well, where we said, said that workers are workers on a specific level. You don't divide them on the race. So we believe that Sasso must come forward with a scheme that include. Inclusion will also lead to the empowerment of black workers, but I think then it's a win-win answer. And this um, um, Sasol case study um, can be a case study where we developed a model for South Africa because we sit with a dilemma. We have transformation objectives, imperatives. And on the other one, we wa don't want to create new forms of imbalances and frustration. Mm. And I think we can get models that accommodate both. And th I think this is a chance for a good example for South Africa on how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so th uh, the strike began today, or there's a go slow that started today, and the official strike is going happening on Thursday. Just take yes. us through the detail. Um, yeah, Sasol is busy with a total shutdown at this stage. Um, that is their big maintenance program. Sure. And that is strategically for us uh, very important. That is why we started today mm. already with the go slow. We frustrate the um, startup of the um, um, the the um, pro maintenance program at this stage they are one and a half days behind schedule that will cost them millions of rands mm. and then it will build up the first day when it's a full-blown strike. Well Dirk we will continue to follow those developments thank so you. thank you so much for your time that was Dirk Herman who is the chief executive at Solidarity.